together. O oh Lord, thou hast searched me. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is hard, I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend into heaven, thou art there. And if I make my bed in hell, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand be me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be lighter about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from me, but the light shineth as the day. The darkness and the light. Possess my reign, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and my soul knows about them. My substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret, I curiously walked in the lowest parts of the earth. My eyes did see my substance. Yet being unperfect, and in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! Slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, this bloody man. For his seed in his seed, and thy enemies is taken in his name. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am not I grieved with those that rise up against me? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them as my enemies. Search me, O God. Try me and know my thoughts. 24 and last to read together. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Praise God. May the Lord have his richest blessings to the reading of his holy word. This morning I give honor to God who is the head of my life. His Son, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the Blessed Holy Ghost, to my pastors, pastors, present and absent, family members, officers, saints in Christ, I greet you all this morning in the matchless name of Jesus. Because his name is worthy to be praised. This morning I can say he's great. And he's greatly to be praised. He's mighty this morning. He's us up this morning. Look how we all look beautiful. Can you imagine when we go to heaven how beautiful we're going to be? To be walking in that beautiful heaven that our master has prepared for us. This morning we are shouting in victory this morning. Because this morning, victory is ours. You pray my like Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. joy and the strength of our lives this morning. His strength, oh, keeps us day by day by day, and it's perfect in everything. We can't do anything without God.
God's strength. Amen? We know that whenever we may try to do whatever, we may try to do whatever we can, but the strength of God is what gives us, what keeps us going. Amen? So this morning, his strength is perfect. Success to show, no glory of my own, yet in my weakness, He is there to let me know His strength is perfect when our strength is. God, he'll carry us when we can't carry on, raised in his power, the weak become strong, his strength is strength is perfect we can only know the power that he when we see just how deep our weakness goes, his strength it must begin when ours comes to an end. He
you believe that this morning, stand up on your feet and let's worship the Lord. He is our strength this morning. Strength like no other this morning that reaches to us. Hallelujah. Praise God. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Come on, sing it this morning. Strength like no other. Reaches. your voice and say you are you are my strength he strength like no other no other oh strength like no other reaches say it again you are my strength oh strength like
victory. Victory is sure. Today is my amen. We may not feel like we're victorious, but we know without a doubt that victory today is my hallelujah. Sometimes we gotta tell old Satan. We gotta tell he and he and his minions that victory today. Is mine. Hallelujah. And even when the enemy comes upon us like a flood, I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit lifts a standard against him. How many of us know this morning that the battle is not ours? It's the Lord's. Hallelujah. The battle is not ours. It's the Lord. Somebody say, if I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles, then victory shall be mine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You see, Satan has experience fighting against the people of God. We were just born last week. Oh, but I have a Savior with me. I have my Jesus with me. I have my Jesus with me, and Satan is no match for my Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's worthy to be praised. Praise God. Victory is ours. Praise God. Just remain standing with me and turn your Bibles to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, praise God. We're going to read from, I'm going to read from verse 1. Uh, 1 down to verse 10 in Ephesians chapter 2. And I'm just so glad that we are in the house of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm so glad that we are in the house of God this wonderful Sunday morning. Amen. I don't have to tell you that there are so many other places we could be. But God has kept us. Amen. Amen. Oh, when Jesus touched the man, 
the man that were, he had demon. And the Bible says when he touched him, he, the man was clothed. And he was in his right mind. He was at the feet of Jesus. You see, he used to run around naked. In chains. Outside of himself. But when he met Jesus, hallelujah, his life was transformed. When you meet Jesus, you'll never be the same. I'm not going to tell you you're not going to have problems. Job says a man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. We will have trouble. But Jesus said, be of good courage. Oh, because I have overcome the world. And because he lives... Come on, let me hear you. Because he lives. Hallelujah. Because he lives, all fear is God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1. And, and, and it's a scripture that some of you could say by heart. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, Come on, somebody. But God, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of, of ourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. Amen. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Praise God. May the Lord add a rich blessing to the reading of his holy word. Praise God. You may be seated. This morning it is a blessing to be in the house of God. Amen. It's a blessing. Amen, amen, amen. To be in the house of God and to give him honor and praise this morning. I thank God for his, his love. Great love, Paul says. Greater love hath no man than this. And a man laid down his life for his friends. I thank God this morning for our pastors. And this month is Clergy Appreciation Month. The month of October. Stand to your feet, Pastor Brown. And Sister Sharon Brown, praise God. And Sister Lydia. Hallelujah. Pastor Police is not here, but we, 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 we thank God for her. Come on and put your hands together just for the servants of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. And, let, and, and I know we can't hug like we used to, but it's okay to send them a message. In the middle of the day, don't wait for their birthday or their anniversaries. Just send a text to say, I'm praying for you. I'm thinking about you. I love you. I appreciate you. And I want you to know that those kind words can really lift somebody's spirit. Because sometimes you don't know, hallelujah, what your leaders are going through. Somebody said the higher the monkey climbs. Well, that's, a, that's, a, that's an old Jamaican saying. But the more he's exposed, meaning the the more God uses you, the more elevated you are in the kingdom, the more of a target you are for the enemy. And I want you to know that if you think you are the only one who have trials, you just walk with a preacher just for one day. Hallelujah. 
and you will begin to think differently. Amen? And so we thank God for them this morning. And again, Pastor Police, in her absence, we thank God for her and thank God for the labor of love that she's been doing in the kingdom. I don't want to sound self-serving, so I won't say anything about me. But I thank God for his grace and for his mercy. Amen? Now, the, um, the interesting thing about the word this morning, I don't want to thank God for everyone in the house this morning, all of us. Our members and visiting friends, everybody in their respective places, accept holy greetings. This month is also Breast Cancer Awareness. So some people are in pink. Yes. Uh, we remember those who are suffering, those who may have lost their lives. And, and of course, survivors. We thank God for what he's doing. Amen. In all things, we give him Thanks, because we know that he is at work to do what? To accomplish his purpose in our lives. This morning, the text, is, is, the text before us is from Ephesians chapter 2, and the topic is exchanging death for life. Exchanging death for life. Amen. Exchanging death for life. Exchanging living dead for dying life. And that is a paradox. And a paradox is something that somehow it sounds contradictory. And in scripture there are many paradoxes. But we're going to deal with just this, just, just this one this morning. And the Bible talks about the fact that we are living but we are dead. Oh hallelujah. There's a program on TV called The Walking Dead. I don't know much about it, but I want you to know that every individual who is not saved, who is not a part of the kingdom of God, is a living dead. The Bible said in Proverbs that the woman that liveth in sin is dead even while she liveth. Amen? So it is something that we have to think about. And this is not what man says, this is what God says. And I want to know what, how God feels about me. Because that's what counts. Amen. And so as we look at the text this morning, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus. And I want you to understand that believers ought to be reminded of the word of God. Yes, you see, sometimes we are so encumbered with the affairs of this life. Sometimes we feel so overrun by the trials that we feel like God has forgotten us. But Paul says, you, you, you got to remember where you are coming from. Somebody said, look where he has brought me from. And this morning, I'm here to tell you that if God saved you, he has power to keep you. If God delivered you from sin, he will not allow you to suffer by the wayside and leave you alone. But he has a plan for your life. Amen. Amen. And so Paul says in the first verse, he says, And you hath he quickened, you hath he brought back to life who were dead in trespasses and sins. If you are not saved, you are a living dead. Amen. Amen. None of us, we don't need any special report to tell us that the world is troubled today. Amen. We don't need any special vision to know that there is trouble in the world. And while there is trouble, we have a few people going around and they're giving us some solutions to these problems in the world. And they tell us that if we are a little more educated, then we would be okay. Mm -hmm. And if we try to work out our own problems within ourselves, it's going to be okay. But you see, the problem is that man without God is dead. And when an individual is dead, you are unable to respond to any stimuli. Oh, hallelujah. When you are dead to God, when you hear the word of God, unless the Holy Spirit brings that word to you, it means nothing to you because you are dead. 
You are spiritually dead. Oh God. And so they tell us that the problems with life is it is 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 social. The answer is man man's problem is that we can't relate to each other. So if we can relate better to each other, if we can remove racial tension, then the world would be okay. The problem is man is dead. Somebody come and say, no, it is not social, it is psychological. So if man can get into his inner feelings and begin to understand himself and begin to elevate his self-esteem, then maybe that would be the answer. I'm here to tell you that that is not the answer. The problem is man without God is dead. Somebody said, well, it's not, it's, it's, it's not social, it's not psychological, or oh, it is environmental. So it has to be, the problem has to be the way that man was brought up. The way he was raised. Maybe his parents beat him too much, and so he was abused. Or maybe he was not given enough hugs as a child, and so now his behavior is as a result of how he was treated growing up. But that's not the answer. You see, the answer is, man without God is dead. And when you are dead, you are unable to respond to any stimulus. Are you with me? Oh, hallelujah. I remember some years ago, I went on an assignment, a travel assignment to work in California. And while I was there, I attended this church. And there was this beautiful little boy. He was about three years old. A very pleasant guy. And he was running around in the church. Very lively, very personable. And one weekend, he was playing with his friends in the backyard. There was a field and he... They went and they dug a hole and they, they were playing. Oh God. And they buried him, covered him up, and I don't know what they were doing in the interim, but they forgot that he was there. And you and I know that after four minutes, you begin to experience brain death if there is no oxygen. Long and short of the story is that they finally. They, 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 they finally realized that they, he was covered. They took him out and it was just too late. Little boy. But it didn't matter how much they tried to rouse him. It didn't matter what they did to him. He was gone. He was dead. And so when an individual is dead, you could prick them with a needle. It doesn't matter what you do. They are dead. And this is what Paul is saying. That without God, without God, man is dead. Cannot respond to the word. And sometimes you wonder why people, they hear the word of God. They hear sermons upon sermons. And they hear, you tell them about heaven. You tell them about hell. And it doesn't mean anything. The answer is that man is dead. Are you with me? And so when you are dead, unless God himself wakes you up, you have no hope this morning. And so Paul is saying to the believers in Ephesus, he's right to the church. He says, no, remember who you were. He says, you have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. In time past, hallelujah, how we used to behave he says, this is how we were. In verse 5 of the text, hallelujah. Ephesians 2 and verse 5. He says, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us. God quickened us together with Jesus Christ. And so today, we have been brought back to life. And so the problem is not social. It's not psychological. Oh, it's not environmental. The fact is that 
Man without God is dead. And so I want us to look at a few words this morning because I want you to understand that in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, Paul writing to the same church in Ephesus 4.18, he says, this is how we use, no, I'm sorry, verse 12, verse 18, beg your pardon, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of the heart. Now you say to me, Pastor, how come the heart is blind? The heart don't have eyes. You see, he's talking about the spiritual heart. He's not talking about the physical heart that rests on the left side of your chest. That one is just responsible for pumping blood. Oh, but there is a spiritual heart. There is a heart in every man. And that heart has storage capacity. It's a spiritual heart. And that heart is able to allow things to lodge there. This is why Jesus says from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. He's not talking about this heart. Oh, but there is a heart. Hallelujah. And it is talking about your mind. You see, in your mind is where you have the lying and the stealing. And the cheating. Hallelujah. And all the things that defile us, they rest in our minds. This is what Paul says. Our mind needs to be renewed by the word of God. Because unless your heart is renewed, you will not be able to walk with God. You see, the heart, that the, the, the spiritual heart, it has storage capacity. If this heart ever starts to store things, you are in trouble. Amen. It just serves as a pump. And if blood begins to settle there. Amen. But thank God for the word of God. You see, man is spiritual and man is physical. When the Bible says you are spirit, when you are dead, he's talking about being spiritually dead. Spiritually ignorant to the knowledge of God. And unless God opens up that eye, those eyes, you will never understand who God is. And so Paul, he gives us a list of words, and I want to run through them very quickly because the time will run out before we get started. Amen. So the first word he uses is the word sin. We were dead in sin. And sin is, hallelujah, is to shoot at something and miss. Really? Sin there is to miss the target. Sin there is to miss the mark. And so we, we are, we were dead in sin. Now, you'll ask me, but pastor, oh, hallelujah, what is he talking about? You see, sin is not only what you do, but sin is what you cannot do. Oh, hallelujah. You see, Jesus said, Jesus said, be ye perfect, as your Father in heaven is perfect. Is that right? He said, be ye holy, for God is holy. Which of us have actually hit that mark? And so we are sinners because we were born in sin. As a matter of fact, we were born spiritually stillbirth. When we were born, we were born without the consciousness towards God. When we were born, we were born outside of the will of God. Amen. I'm not talking about your physical birth, but I'm talking spiritually. Amen. Spiritually, we were born sinners. So what Paul is saying that we were dead in sin because we missed the mark. We cannot please God because we were born in sin. And this is why when John saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Not sins now, but sin. Because there is an Adamic sin that you and I were born with. 
And somebody say, well, listen, I've been a moral, I'm a, I'm a person of morals, of high moral standards. I didn't lie. I didn't cheat. I haven't done anything unrighteous. I, I must go to heaven. Really? You see, you are not a sinner only because of what you've done, but you're a sinner because of who you are. You were born in sin. And so Paul is saying, we were dead in trespasses and sin. The next word is trespasses. Hallelujah. And trespass means to slip from the path. You miss the mark. Lord Jesus, you're on a pathway, but you can't stay on the pathway. It's like you lose your way. And this is why we call sinners lost, because they have lost their way. They have, they have lost their way to God. You see, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. Isaiah said, all we like sheep, we had gone astray. We had turned everyone. So we all had our own way. So we were dead in trespasses and sin. We missed the mark. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. And not only did we miss the mark, but we were enjoying ourselves. We were enjoying sin. We used to love to sin. We used to make appointments to sin. Hallelujah. And we used to drag others with us to join in our sinful activities. You don't have to say amen, but thanks be to God. For the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Romans 3.23 tells us. For all have sinned. Amen. All have sinned. Not some of us. But all of us have sinned. And we have come short of God's glory. Man. We are in trouble. But thank God. There is an answer. You see, the first solution to the problem is admitting that there is a problem. We have a hard time admitting that there is a problem. And so we fool ourselves and try to convince others that everything is okay when there is a problem. But thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank God for the blood this morning. Hallelujah. And so Paul says, we're in time past. We walked according to the course of this world. So not only were we dead in trespasses and sin, but the other word is worldliness. We walked according to the course of this world. What is he talking about? You see, this world, this world, this world has an order. Yes. And worldliness is order apart from God. Mm. The word man is very creative. Man has developed order in the society. The word for worldliness there is the word cosmos, which is a Greek word, and it's the opposite of chaos. So worldliness has to do with the world order. And you might hear people talking about the new world order. Because there's a new world order coming up. Where there's going to be an antichrist. In charge of the world. And there are people who are afraid now. Of the new world order. But we don't, we don't, we don't walk around in fear. Because we know Jesus. And because we know Jesus. All fear is gone. We don't fear what man can do to us. Oh because man can only hurt the body. Oh but God says fear the one. That can hurt body and soul. Are you with me? So he says, no, Paul is saying that we used to walk according to the world. What does that mean? Man, anything the world came up with, that was what we were in. We used to, we used to pattern our lives, fashion ourselves from our educators, from our politicians, from the leaders in different aspects of society. Because there is a world order. And the world order is that, listen, you better fight to get to the front of the line. And even if you have to step on somebody, get to the front. But that's not the way of God. Amen. <laughs> I remember I saw a bumper sticker. It says, do unto others before they do unto you. And I thought, wow, 
But thank God for the word. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Paul told the Philippians, we need to esteem each other more highly than we esteem ourselves. That's not what the world teaches, but that's the way of God. He says we have to love him more than we love ourselves. The world says that you have to love yourself first. Marriage counselor tell people that in order for them to love their spouses, they have to first love themselves. Amen. The counselor tells people that if you are not happy, you can't make somebody else happy. Happiness does not come from you. Happiness, real joy comes from God. You will never, if you're looking for happiness down here, you ain't going to find it. Because it is only for a moment. But the joy of the Lord, it is my strength. Because in Jesus, I have hope for a better tomorrow. In Jesus, it doesn't matter what happens down here. My hope is built on Jesus. You see, my affection is up there because Jesus is up there. You can take all my stuff down here. Job said, though worms eat my body, I'm going to see my maker. I'm going to see God. My redeemer live it. I'm going to see him for myself. Hallelujah. And not another. We don't have any record that Job ever saw the resurrection. But Job was a man of faith. Believers are going to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Amen. So he's talking about worldliness. Everything the world comes up, we're in it. We live our lives based on the world system. The world's doctrine. People read the horoscope. I wonder what my horoscope said today. Christians want to know what the horoscope says in order for them to make decisions. In who do you trust? Amen. So Paul says we used to walk according to the course of the world. Everything the world came up with, we were a part of it. I notice all of this is in the past tense because that was before you got saved. Is that right? So if you find yourself doing these things now, when you're saved, then we got to ask the Lord for help. Amen. Praise God. And don't think that because you are saved, you're not a target for the enemy. Don't think because you are saved, Satan don't know your address. As a matter of fact, you're the one he's looking for. Because he wants to get you back on his side. Amen. The next word is Satan. Mm. We walked according to the course of the world. According to the prince of the power of the ear. Who is that? That's Satan. The prince of the power of the ear. That's what he's calling scripture. The Bible called him the prince of this world. Satan was one of the highest angels. He became jealous. How many, of us, how many of us know that jealousy is not of God? Oh, Lord. Amen. And so Satan got jealous. And he wanted the praise. He wanted man to praise him. He wanted to be exalted. He says, I'm going to exalt my throne above the throne of God. Are you with me? Oh, hallelujah. And so Paul calls him the prince of the power of the ear. The prince of the cosmos. Satan has power. And don't you think for a moment that he doesn't have power. Satan has power. Uh-huh. Now, he is not behind every sin that you commit. Because Satan is not omnipresent. He can't be here and over there at the same time. So I think we give him too much credit. But he does have influence. And so Satan is behind the world system. When the Antichrist comes, he is going to be controlled by Satan. Yes? Satan is behind every false religion. 
every false religion, every false teacher, they, every cultic, thank you sister, everything that is against God is controlled by Satan. And I want you to know that you may be listening in the house or outside of the house and you are not saved and you think that you are free. You are not free because you are under the control of Satan. You are under the control of sin. And you may think that you are free. But when you, wherever you go, Satan is behind it. Because Satan is against everything that is of God. Oh, I ain't listening to Satan. If you're not listening to God, guess who you're listening to? There is no middle ground. There is no third party. It is either righteousness or unrighteousness. So if what you are doing is not glorifying God, then it's, oh, hallelujah, it's behind Satan. Amen. Well, no, I, no, 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 I hate Satan. No, you don't. If you hate Satan, then you would be on the Lord's side. You would commit yourself to Jesus and you'd be serving God. Are you with me? There's no third party. There's no independent party. It's either Jesus or the devil. Amen? Do you ever notice that anywhere Satan shows up? Satan is very powerful. Don't think for a moment he's not. When Satan is ready to tempt, you notice who he tempts? Jesus. People who have power somewhere in his area code. When Moses died and he showed up to claim his body, who showed up? The Ma the Michael, the archangel. And if you read the scripture in Jude, the Bible said that he did not bring a railing accusation against Satan. But what he said was, the Lord Jesus rebuke you. You cannot rebuke Satan on your own. Why, pastor? Because you don't have the power. You've got to come in the name of Jesus. And this is why the demons that came and were trying to cast out, oh, we cast out, we cast you out by the name that Paul used. First of all, he, was, he didn't know Jesus. You see, you've got to know Jesus to be able to... Lord, where does man fit in God's level of creation? The Bible said we were made lower than the angels. That means we don't have supernatural power. Our only power is in Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Oh, God. So when you begin to cast out, and you begin to cast out, you make sure you go in the name of Jesus. Because that's the name that Satan knows. The demon said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Oh, but who are you? And the demon began to beat them. And oh, hallelujah, chase them from the house. So Satan is influential. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians, I think it's 11, that Satan has transformed himself into an angel of light. And he can transform his ministers into ministers of righteousness. So, hallelujah, you have preachers behind the pulpit who are controlled by Satan. Oh, pastor. Oh, hallelujah. So, how do you know the difference? You better know the word of God. You better get yourself embedded in the scriptures. Make sure you are covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about being a church goer. But you make sure that your life is wrapped up with Jesus. So when you call him Jesus, he is right there. He is right there. He is right there to hear and answer your prayer. The church will not save you. It is Jesus Christ who will make the difference in our lives. 
Lord, I'm moving, moving, moving down, moving down the line. So the next word, hallelujah, is lusts. Let's move a little faster. Amen? He says, whom, whom also we had our conversation in time past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh. Hallelujah. We used to walk out of the flesh. Anything the flesh says, that's what we do. Whatever the flesh wants. Even if it was outside of God's will. Huh? We went after it. Because the world tells us that we can have what we want. You can have what you want and you can have it now. Are you with me? And it's okay. It doesn't matter what the situation is. So Paul says that we used to walk according to the lust of the flesh. Whatever the, lust, the, the, the lustful desires were, we would fulfill them. Yes? Sexual impropriety. It didn't matter what it was, who it was. We just went and satisfied ourselves and we felt it was okay. You see, he was writing to the church in Ephesus where they were worshipping uh, the goddess Diana. And Diana was the goddess of fertility. And so every kind of sexual practice used to be done in Ephesus. You name it, it was done there. Some of what you're seeing today is not new. There is nothing new under the sun. It's just a recycling of sin. And so in Ephesus, there was all kind of sin going on, sexual practices. And Paul says, this is how you used to behave. But thanks be to God. Amen. The next word is wrath. Yes. He says, and we and were by nature the children of wrath. No, wrath is the end. Because when you are a child of wrath, the next thing you are expecting is judgment. Amen? Yeah. Judgment from God. Yeah. Hallelujah. But thanks be to God for grace and mercy. You see, in John 3 and verse 18, Jesus talks about, uh, for, for, for God so loved the world. Amen? And he says, if you don't believe in the Son, you are already condemned. You are already a child of wrath. Yes? Children of disobedience. Glory to God. Rejecting the word of God. Rejecting the will of God. Because we want to satisfy our flesh. Why? Because we are spiritually dead. Not connected with God. And if you die in that state, there's only one place you're going to go. And it's hell. Oh, nobody's sending you there. But it's the life that you live that will cause you to go there. You see, the wages of sin is death. Sin carry a wage. There is a payment for sin. Is that right? Death. But thank God, the gift of God is eternal life. Thank God for Jesus. So you are living, but you are dead. You are walking, but you are dead. You are communicating, but you are dead. You are dead to the righteous will of God. Why? Because you are not saved. And if you are not saved, you are lost. There is no middle ground. There is no middle place to hang out. You are either with God or you are against God. In Psalm 711, the psalmist said, God judgeth the righteous, but God is angry with the wicked every day. If you are not saved, God is angry with your life. And he wants to save you. Some people will tell you, well, hallelujah, I am not saved. And God, hear my prayer. That's another one. But if, if, if that is true, then the scripture is not right. Because in John 9, 31, he says, For God heareth not sinners. But if any man choose to be a worshiper, if you come to the decision to serve God, then God is ready to hear your cry. What, then why am I alive today if I'm a sinner? God is good to the just and to the unjust. His goodness covers the unjust, giving them an opportunity to come to him. You see how patient he is? Amen. All right, let me move along. Hallelujah. I don't want to tire you. We're, all, we're halfway there. No, the time is gone. Okay, so we come to, to verse 4. And there is another side of the equation. 
So Paul says, all those words that we mentioned, they, 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 they had to do with the living dead. But now, there is the dying alive. Dying alive? You're alive, but you're dying. You see, spiritually now, you're alive. But physically, you're dying. Because this body is subject to die. Because it was stained with sin. It was stained by sin. This body that we live in, oh, it disappoints us. Yes, it does. It causes us pain. It deceives us. You nourish it. You cherish it. After a while, it starts to fall apart. Give it a few years. Amen. The knee can't bend anymore. The back start to hurt. Oh, the, some of the organs, what don't stop working completely? Some go and go slow. So while we are alive, we are dying. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I saw somebody reading this morning. And I know normally when you're reading, you hold the book here. You know something is changing. And this is the normal progression of life. We can't stop it. We may try to slow it down and they give us glasses. But before too long, you have to get another strength. Because this one gets weak. And then you get another, another layer of thickness. Glory to God. So while the outer man is dying, the inner man that has been resurrected from the dead because of Jesus, that inner man is now alive. We are alive with Christ. While the outer man is going to the ground. Because from the ground we came, to the ground we're going back. Yeah? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we get to verse 4. And verse Paul says, no, but God. We were the children of Ra. But God, who is rich in mercy. Are you with me? Rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. So the first word Paul used there is mercy. What is mercy? Lord, because we were dead in sin, God, we, 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 we were supposed to receive judgment, punishment. But mercy, mercy, see there, restrained judgment. God holds back the judgment. So mercy is not giving us what we deserve. Are you with me? Let me say it again. Mercy is God not giving us what we deserve. So he extended mercy. Now, how did God extend mercy? Lord, he gave us grace. And that's the next word. Now, mercy is not giving us what we deserve. Right? God holds back the judgment. Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. Oh, hallelujah. You see, grace is God's unmerited favor. We deserve to die. But God says, look at this dead man. I'm going to give him some grace. And I'm going to make him come alive. Now, this grace and mercy, we didn't ask God for. Because the dead man can't make any requests. So God has to meet us at our point of need. You see, conviction comes from God. Hmm? The Bible says that Jesus said, no man can come to him unless the Father draw him. Is that what he says? In John 6, he said, you can come to him as you feel like, but you come when he draws you. And he draws you through the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the word is the sword of the spirit. So the Holy Spirit takes that word. Sends that word like an arrow. To your heart. And when that word hits your heart. And not this heart, thank God. But the spiritual heart. 
And that word will cause you now to say, Lord, I'm coming home. I need you. I have sinned and I've come short of your glory. Are you with me? If God did not give us mercy and grace, we would still be in sin. Amen? I don't have to ask you by show of hands. But we were conscious of the fact that the life that we were living, we were headed to hell. Every new year, we make resolution. You don't have to say amen. I'm going to do this, Lord. I'm going to do this, Lord. I'm going to do this, Lord. On January 1. By the time we reach January 4. We forgot all the things that we said we were going to do. Lord, I'm going to love you more. Lord, I'm going to get saved. Sometimes it's when you find yourself in the party house. That you said, but I wasn't I support, not supposed to be here. We forget the promises. But thank God for the blood of Jesus. When he transforms us, he gives us a new heart. Amen. So Paul says, no, God, he didn't have a little bit of mercy. But he is rich in mercy. Rich in mercy. For, and, and, and then he goes on to say, for his great love. Mm. So there is great, there is mercy, and there is grace, and then there is great love. Not just love, but great love. You see, I'm going to love something that I'm attracted to. Yeah? Amen. If I'm going to look for a lady to get married to, well, I'm married now. Amen. But you look for somebody that appeals to the eye. You look for somebody who makes your, your heart skip a beat. Amen. You look for somebody who makes, who makes you, make you, you do crazy stuff. Because that person stimulates something inside of you. But look at what God does. Romans 5 and verse 8. Oh, hallelujah. But God commended his love towards us. In that while we were yet, we weren't lovable. Oh, we weren't attractive. We were, we were haters of God. Amen. But while we were in sin, God commended his love towards us. He loves us so much. He loves us so much that he was willing to wash away all our sins. And he was able to dress us up and make us look good. Amen. 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 Christians, you look good. Amen. Amen. And you don't even have to put on any adornment to look good. Because you look good just the way you are. Hallelujah. When Joseph went down to Egypt, he looked good. The Egyptian, I mean the, the, the Hebrew... Look good to the Egyptian. Because when God saves you, he beautifies you. Oh, hallelujah. He dresses you up with meekness, with salvation. People who didn't used to see you, start to notice you now. They notice you look different. There is a glow about you. There is an anointing about you. There's a, there's a breath of fresh air about you. There is a peace around you. There is a calm around you. People just want to be in your presence. Even when they don't like you. They want your advice. Because there is something about you. And when God touches our lives. He changes us. And I'm so glad that he's not in the business of refurbishing. Hey! Oh God, he's not in the business of remanufacturing. But my God, he, he makes us new. David said, create in me a clean heart. The one that I was born with is messed up. Has been polluted. But if you give me a new heart, I will be able to serve you. He said, God, the sin that I have committed is because of the heart that I have. Oh, but if you give me a new heart... 
I'm going to serve you. He says, God, if you desired animal sacrifice, I would have given it. Because I have them. But the sacrifices of God are a broken. Broken. You know the Bible. A broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart. Amen. That's what God requires. Amen. Lord. So Paul says, while we were sinners, Christ loves us. Amen. Uh, not loved. Loves us. Because he still loves us. Yes. I'm, I'm still enjoying his love. Hallelujah. Even when we were dead. The next word is resurrection. Resurrection. Even when we were dead in sins. Hath quickened us together. Verse 5. With, with Christ Jesus. So we, we, we were dead in sin. But now we experience resurrection. So what kind of resurrection pastor? Well. If you, have, if you experience a spiritual death, then it has to be a spiritual resurrection. So now we are alive. Amen? We have been raised from the dead. So now we are no more walking dead, but we are walking alive. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And has raised us up together and make us sit together in heavenly places with Christ. So now, the same way Christ rose from the dead, we are experiencing a spiritual resurrection. And in time to come, we will experience a bodily resurrection. Are you with me? And so the spirit goes before the body. Huh? Amen. Do you know that when God, when God put man together... He made his spirit before he made his body. Oh, that's another sermon. Oh, for another time. But I thank God for his word. So he raises the spirit before he raises the body. Because the spirit goes before the body. God is so concerned about the spiritual part of us. That he wants to bring us back into fellowship with him. Amen. So now we, we, we experience a resurrection with Christ. We are now living with Christ. St. John eleven twenty five. 25, we know it by heart. St. John eleven twenty five, 25, where Jesus told Martha, he said, Martha, Martha, <laughs> I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Amen? Amen. So we're going to be alive with Jesus Christ. Romans 6 and verse 3. We're winding down now. Amen. Five minutes. Five minutes? Is that okay? All right. Praise God. I don't see any smiles. <laughs> know ye not that so many of us that were, as I were, were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Huh? You're baptized into his death. Next verse, my brother. Glory to God. When we're baptized with him, we're baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. That's why Paul says, if anyone in Christ is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. One last word, and the word is heavenly. So not only are we risen with Christ, but now we are seated in heavenly places. But pastor, I'm down here. You see, you are down here. But he's a set your affections on things above. This world is not my home. I'm a passing through, but my treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. You see, the angels beckon me from heaven's open door. I can't be at home in this world anymore. Application. We're down here now. Troubled on every side. But my mind is in glory. Oh, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Paul says, I'm troubled on every side, but not in despair. Why? Because my home is up there. Oh, God. They could take the house down here. Oh, but you can't touch the one in glory. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, where I am, there you may be also. The mortgage is already paid. The, oh, the insurance is already paid. No flood, not up there. So we don't need flood insurance. The electricity bill is already paid because Jesus is the light. The water bill is already paid because out of the throne flows the real water. Oh, I will never need to go to Publix because there's a tree up there that bear 12 manner of fruit. And the leaves are for the healing of the nation. So the doctor bill is already paid. Hallelujah. My home is in glory. My home is in glory. I'm only a pilgrim. I'm only passing through. You may see me now, but tomorrow you may not see me. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going home to be with Jesus. You see, the same guy who was laden with sin. God. Who is rich in mercy. Took my sins away. Nailed them to the cross. Hallelujah. Oh Psalm. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. And verse 10 my brother. It's coming on the screen. Hallelujah. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything. To God in prayer. I'm so glad. He has not dealt with us. After our sins. Nor rewarded us. According to our iniquities. Why? Because the wages of sin is death. We deserved death. Oh but God laid my debt. On Jesus. So that now. I can have life and have it more abundantly. The next verse my brother. Hallelujah. Listen to what he's saying. He's saying, and this is David writing in the Psalms. For as the heaven, watch this now, is above the earth. How far? How high? Don't even think about it. Because it's going to blow your mind. Because the first thing is, which heaven? <laughs> so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. God is a merciful God. The next verse, my brother. Hallelujah. As far as the east is from the west. So far hath he removed our transgressions from us. You, you, you know how far the east is? Amen. You know how, 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 how far the west is? They never meet. They are at opposite ends of the pole. Well, God is saying... That's how far I want to remove your sins. But do you want him to remove it this morning? You've got to ask him. Amen. Somebody said, how can I change from living death to dying life? How can that transfer be made? Very simple. Very simple. Hallelujah. For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Amen. 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 Not of works. Lest any man should boast. Ask of him. Ask him. Somebody say ask the Savior. To help you. Amen. He'll comfort and keep you. He is willing. To aid you. He will carry you through. Hallelujah. Just ask him this morning. He's right here. Right here, right now. I'm so glad he's not in heaven looking down, but he's right here. And one of the great things about God and his character is that he is omnipresent. Satan is not, but Jesus is. 
Somebody say, what, what, what is omnipresent? Omnipresent means that he's everywhere. But there's more to it than that. He is everywhere at the same time. So he's here right now. He's in Jamaica right now. He's in Canada right now. He's in Down Under right now. He is everywhere at the same time. Omnipresent. That's our God. Come on and give him praise. Put your hands together and give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, in closing, sin is real. Don't play around with sin. Don't dance around in sin and pretend to be saved. If you know that you're not saved, come to Jesus Christ. And say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Wash me in your blood. The worst thing is to pretend that you are saved. And when you stand before God, for him to say, depart from me, I never, not know, knew you. That means all the time that you thought you, there was no relationship. He's saying, but come to me now. He says, today is the day of salvation. Not only did God take us, take away our sins, but listen to verse 6, and I'm finished now. He has raised us up together, right? And made us to sit together in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. The grace of God. God's mercy is extended today. Tomorrow is not promised. Today is the day of salvation. I'll tell you something. The world has a lot to offer. But it comes down to three things. Sin, shame, and disgrace. But Jesus says, come. Let me give you life. And life more abundantly. You want eternal life? It's in Jesus Christ. Would you stand to your feet and give God a praise this morning? Hallelujah. Just stand to your feet and give God a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. God has laid this word on my heart. And it was confirmed by the Holy Spirit. And I thank God for his word because the word of God is right all the time. Amen. Yeah. And somebody may say, but Lord, why you got to preach like that? <laughs> you see, that's what the word came for. The word came to separate us from sin. The church is like a hospital. Sick people come in, but whole people go out. Are you with me? But it's not like any hospital. Because some hospitals you go in, Lord help us. You go in with one sickness. And you contract two more while you're there. Oh, hallelujah. They call them nosocomial infection. But I thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. That when you come in sick, you leave whole. You leave well. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Your blood count is up to mark. Your oxygen level up to mark. Spiritual blood pressure, absolutely normal. Because of the power of Jesus Christ. Thank God for the blood this morning. I'm not going to tell you that when you, when you become a Christian, you're going to be rich. He didn't promise riches to everybody. But he promised salvation. I'm not here to tell you that when you become a child of God, you will never get sick. I don't have the, I can't say that. But I can tell you that whatever it is you're going through, Jesus will be with you right through to the end. I can't tell you that if you come here and you get saved, that you're going to have a house on the hill with a white picket fence. That's not promised. 
But I can tell you that Jesus gave his all for us so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. Are you with me? He will transform your heart and he will give you a new heart. Life begins at death. Eternal life. Eternal life. When a thousand years have gone, eternity has just begun. That's what Jesus Christ is promising today. Eternal life. Bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Lord, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your compassion. Lord, we thank you that despite our past, my God, you came and you extended your mercy. We thank you for your resurrection. Lord God, if there was no resurrection, Calvary would be meaningless. And without Calvary, there would be no resurrection. But we thank you, Lord God, because the resurrection is one of the greatest events in human history. Because of your resurrection, we can have life and have it more abundantly. Lord, I pray for somebody this morning who is listening. Oh God, who is not saved. We pray for salvation in your name. Oh God, I'm so thankful this morning that you would be gracious to us today. That you would be merciful to us one more time. Grant us grace and mercy. Grant us resurrection through Jesus Christ. Deliver us, O oh God, from this sinful world that is about to sink into the abyss. This world, O oh God, that seems to offer so much promise. O oh God Almighty, this earth is reserved for fire. But help us, O oh God, to look towards that heavenly city, that city that Abraham spoke about, whose builder and maker is God. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Save those, Jesus. Save those souls. Oh, God, who are not looking to you, who, have, who are turning a deaf ear even now, who have heard your word but are still resisting the calling voice of the Holy Spirit. I pray, God, that your mercy would be extended today. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Salvation is in you and you alone. Help us to get our priorities right. Help us to be ready for that meeting, O oh God, in the air. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Anoint us, Lord Jesus Christ, for service. Send us out into the harvest, O oh God. You said the harvest is plentiful. Oh, but the laborers are few. Lord, our desire this morning is to be laborers in your harvest. Give us what it takes, O oh God. Grant us conviction. That when we hear your word, we can cry out to you. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God, we pray in the name of Jesus that we would accept your salvation. Your salvation is the lifeboat this morning. Oh, God, the lifeboats that came at the time of the Titanic. And while the ship was sinking, my God, the people were having a party because they believed the ship could not sink. And so the lifeboats left. Some of them were half empty. Because the people trusted in the ship. Help us, oh God, to understand that salvation, Jesus Christ, is our only lifeboat. Oh, there is no more lifeboat coming after this. Help us, Lord God, to seek refuge in your lifeboat. So that when the ship goes down, Oh, we would not go down with it. Oh, God, go before us this morning. Remember our children, oh, God. Oh, we love them so much, but you love them even more. Oh, save their souls. Deliver them from the hands of the enemy. Oh, God, some of them have no mind to serve you. Oh, they're enjoying the things of this world. But I pray this morning, God, that you would break the stronghold of the enemy in their lives. Rebuke the destroyer on their behalf. 
Oh God, those habits that are holding them back. Those habits that are holding them bound. Oh God Almighty, the things of the world that seem so enticing. Oh, the alcohol. Oh God, the drugs, the drinks, sex, pornography. Oh God, the lustful desires of the flesh. I pray that you would break those strongholds right now in the name of Jesus and set them free, my God, to give their lives over to you. You're coming back, Lord. Help us to be ready in the name of Jesus Christ. And whatever, Lord, I should feel of asking you this morning, do it for your glory. Remember those who are sick this morning. Mother Jones in the hospital. Brother Matir, oh God. Cover him, touch him. Right now in the name of Jesus. Brother Roy. Evangelist Martin Gooden. Jesus. No son of David. Have mercy this morning, oh God. Have mercy, Jesus. Have mercy, oh God. Oh, I'm so glad that you are slow to anger and you are plenteous in mercy. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Oh, God, there are people who are hurting from different forms of cancer this morning. Cancer of the liver, cancer of the stomach, cancer of the bones, cancer of the blood. Hallelujah. Pancreatic cancer, cancer of every body, every organ, brain cancer. Jesus Christ, you know what your children are going through this morning. And I know, Lord God, that you're acquainted with our pain, with our grief, with our suffering. We know that there is no sorrow on earth that heaven cannot cure. And so we're calling in the name of Jesus this morning that you would lay hands on your children, my God. That you would perform a miracle as it pleases you. Send help. Relieve the pain. Relieve the pain. Relieve the pain. Some of your children are in pain lying down. They're in pain waking up. Lord God, every walk, every step of the day, they are in pain. Some of them are hooked on core and on on. On, on painkillers, but Jesus, we are calling your holy name this morning. Oh God, look beyond our faults and meet our needs this morning. Lord, I pray for our students who are in college, who are in high school, who are in different levels of education this morning. Whatever the struggle is, God, give them a helping hand. Help them to meet, to reach their goals, because I believe that you're, you're, you're training them, Lord. Oh, for the days to come when you will, when they will, when their abilities, their, 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 their talents will be put on display. May when they stand, oh God, to declare what you have done through them, that you will receive the glory and the honor and the praise. Oh, we give you thanks this morning for what you're about to do. Lord, we thank you for that life that you're about to touch right now. That soul that does not know you, but is coming home this morning. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for salvation. Lord, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. We didn't deserve it. But God, you gave it unto us lavishly. And for that this morning, we thank you. Help us not to take your grace for granted. But help us, oh God, to understand that grace is help in time of need. We tell you thanks this morning. Touch every marriage, Lord. Touch every marriage this morning. Touch every marriage this morning. Oh God, sometimes the ones that we love the most, they are the ones that really hurt us. I pray you touch husbands, touch wives this morning. Remember the single mothers, oh God. Single fathers. Lord God, remember the widows this morning. And the widowers. Lord Jesus Christ, some are married but they are alone. Oh God, I pray that you would step in this morning. Oh God, remember the family this morning. You instituted, you, you put the first family together. We pray you touch right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, there is a marriage where a spouse, one spouse is saved and the other is not. We pray that you would visit that marriage this morning. Visit those marriages, visit those unions. Oh God Almighty, it may be a husband, it may be a wife. Lord, there is salvation in your name this morning. We bring them before you. We bring every situation before you. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Oh, deliver us. Only you can, Lord Jesus. Have thine own way, we pray. Oh, God, somebody's behind bars and is not saved. But I know, oh God, that your word is not bound. Your word is able to reach behind prison bars. Your word is able to reach in the hospital room this morning. Your word, oh God, is not bound. Your word is not restricted. And you, you say when your word is spoken, it will not return unto you void. But it will accomplish the purpose for which it was sent. I pray this morning, Jesus, that somebody that heard your word will turn their life over to you. Before it is too late. Lord God, we look to you by faith this morning. Remembering my loss of prayer. Our pastors. Our leaders. Our officers. Oh God, our members. Everyone this morning. Some are still grieving because they have lost a loved one. Jesus. We are calling on your holy name. Have thine own way, we pray. We look to you by faith this morning. Touch Mother Coleman. In the name of Jesus. Oh God. Sister Angela Dixon this morning. Pastor Brown. Hallelujah. Oh Evangelist Sandra. Oh we're calling you by name. We're calling them by name. Because you know their names. Have thine own way God. Have thine own way. Lord. Our eyes are upon you. We're looking to you for deliverance. We're looking to you for help. Lord God, we're looking to you because you are the only one that can change the situation. God, if you don't show up for us, no one else will. And so we ask for your mercy this morning. We say thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Come on and give God a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on and give God a praise. Come on and shout hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. God bless you. You may be seated, please. At this time, we're going to turn over the service to the praise team again as they proceed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for joining Emmanuel House of Prayer this morning for our Sunday worship service. We hope and pray every song and most importantly, the word of God brought forth today was truly a blessing to you and your family. If this is your first time joining us, we currently have prayer meeting Tuesdays at 8 p.m. on Zoom. Please enter meeting ID 436-337-528. Bible study is every Thursday at 8 p.m. on Zoom as well. The meeting ID for Bible study is 704-868-378. Please enter password 3333 for all Zoom sessions. And of course, if you are physically unable to join us, we live stream every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. here on Facebook or EmmanuelHouseOfPrayer.org forward slash stay connected. If you are in need of prayer, or searching for a church home, we here at Emmanuel House of Prayer would love to pray for you and would welcome you with open arms. Join us on our website, EmmanuelHouseOfPrayer.org forward slash contact us. You can always visit our website, Facebook page, or Instagram for weekly church announcements and community news. Also, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page for free, Emmanuel House of Prayer FTL, where you can view all past Sunday morning worship services. And lastly, tithes and offering may be mailed to the church at 2820 
Northwest 7th Court, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33311. God bless you all. Stay safe and stay connected.